The ending of a piece of media is what leaves the most lasting impression. It's the part where the piece catches out on everything it's set up and attempts to stick the landing. For the purposes of a video game, the ending is the time for the game to culminate into a singular final sequence where the piece demonstrates what its message is and why the audience has stuck around to hear it. How can a game complete the hero's journey with the player as a starring role? How can a game still manage to end satisfactorily independently of the story? And how can the mechanics and storytelling harmonize to create a singular message, all while avoiding common mistakes and dealing with the inconclusive nature of gaming as a whole? First off, let's figure out the necessary pieces for a decent conclusion independent from the interactive nature of gaming. What makes for good narrative closure? At the end of the monomyth, the main character returns to where they began, having changed after a final confrontation with whatever force held power over them or their world. They could not have succeeded without the change, and they can't go back to how things were whenever the story began. For example, Luke learns to use the force, and that's how he takes out the Death Star. Spoilers, by the way for that and for all of these. With that cleared up, what does the introduction of interactivity do to this formula? The ending of a video game still has to be satisfactory if the player skips all the cutscenes. Well, we still got a confrontation with a powerful force, but here the threat is the culmination of every challenge the player has been through along the way. It's sort of like a cumulative final exam. It checks to see if the player has actually learned all the game's mechanics along the way. This is your boss gauntlet, your remixes, or ideally some new sequence that uses old challenges in new ways to show how far the player has come. For example, the final challenge in The Witness is a series of simple timed puzzles that aren't necessarily difficult independently, but become impossible as a whole if the player doesn't know exactly what each type of puzzle is demanding of them. Not only does it require comprehensive understanding of all the game's mechanics, but outside of the box thinking, which the game is known for when the solutions to some of the early puzzles in the sequence subtly offer critically important tips for puzzles towards the end. Knowing this, we can combine both our narrative and mechanical objectives to create a moment that accomplishes both. If the secret to a mechanical finale is a cumulative final exam, and the secret to a narrative finale is a character change, then the perfect blend would be overcoming the culmination of all challenges due to a change that happened somewhere along the way. One of the best endings in gaming would have to go to Celeste. 90% of the way to the top of the mountain, Madeline, having not learned the moral of the story yet, screws up a confrontation with her shadow self and ends up falling all the way back down the mountain. There she re-examines her approach towards her problems and takes another swing at that final confrontation. As a result, she establishes an inner peace and becomes more powerful than ever before. This is reflected mechanically as a second air dash that gets put to the test as the player rockets past remixed old levels towards the summit. Not only does this accomplish a character evolution and set up a final exam, but it also expands on the game, allowing for more complex puzzles. It's also a blast to play, since the player is used to having less tools at their disposal. These Herculean challenges would be impossible without having reached inner peace. It's a change the player themselves gets to go through to overcome the culmination of all their struggles along the way. They're starring in their own monomythic story. Often games make the mistake of introducing a new mechanic too late into the game, making the final puzzle something new instead of something cumulative, or of just giving the player some overpowered tools as a sort of victory lap to close out the game. These moments sacrifice their sense of conclusion for a spectacle. That's not to say these endings can't be satisfying as well, but the way it's done in Celeste manages to avoid denying new players access to important tools and manages to introduce powerful new ideas while still managing to wrap everything up in a nice bow. This new power-up doesn't trivialize the rest of the game. The level design is built around the player's new tools. And even though they have new moves, the game is still teaching them new ways to use them that can be reapplied in earlier levels if the player goes back. The game is revealing even more of its hidden depth as it brings everything together. That hidden depth is important because video games don't end like movies or books. They're a different art form. A player isn't necessarily done with a game until they've decided to move on. Ideally, there's always going to be a better score to chase or a new challenge to run. So how can a game actually end if it knows that if it's doing its job well, the player is just going to stick around? Again, we can look at Celeste because that last level I told you about wasn't technically the last challenge for the player. After completing the story and replaying each level with a new tech taught in the later chapters and b-sides, the player unlocks secret levels that flesh out the new stuff which culminates in the core seaside. What's awesome about this is just how difficult the devs can allow the game to get, since only the most passionate players are going to end up even touching this zone. 
The second final level is amazing, even if you just look at it from a structural perspective. Players who would have gotten burned out by the secret levels will probably just leave the game satisfied at the first ending. Players who are passionate about the game's mechanics get to stick around and see them fully fleshed out, and super fans who love the secret speedrunning tech get to have those talents tested in puzzles that actually expect you to wave dash and dashing wall jump. The core seaside actually begins by introducing a concept that the game hasn't expected from the player at all in any of the playthroughs prior, and the game actually expects the player to remember that tech after a cumulative exam on the rest of the mechanics. As if that wasn't enough, the third final free LC ending hides a PowerPoint presentation on wave dashing behind yet another false ending, and actually expects the player to chain those together with dashing wall jumps without any hand holding from then on. A secret ending isn't all that rare of an idea, you can find it in most modern Mario games, and even the final witness puzzle which I brought up earlier is hidden behind a false ending. But since they're so effective at leaving both hardcore and casual players satisfied, they're a key piece to any quote unquote final level. All in all, endings are all about escalation. A story should escalate to a final confrontation solved with a lesson learned over the course of the journey. A game's mechanics should escalate to a cumulative final exam. And in a narrative game, those should harmonize to an epic final level that escalates on everything the player has been through over the course of the game a gauntlet that can only be overcome due to the skills picked up along the way. If that's going to be a bit much for players who are just interested in the story or just interested in winning, then that ending can be hidden behind a false conclusion that leaves them satisfied without scaring off more intrepid players who want to see things escalate further. What's important is that the game cashes out on everything it's been setting up on leading to this moment. Obviously that means it's heavily dependent on the rest of the game, but that in turn means that if a game has a good ending, then that's a clear sign that it's probably pretty decent as a whole.